Hi, Kava Saidi, violinist and music educator, back again with another video in this lesson series entitled Essential Elements for Strings, Book One. What I realized when making this series is that I needed to make a few preview lessons to get you ready for success on this program. And the second video that you're watching right now is about basic instrument maintenance and care and a little bit about setting up a violin. So a couple things that you want to keep in mind when you're starting violin is how to care for the violin. And the number one way to make sure that the violin is always in good shape is to never <laughs> drop it, obviously, but never put it down on its face on this called the bridge. You never want to put this on a table this way. When you get the violin out of the case, it's going to be facing up like this. You carefully pull it out, handle it with both hands, and you don't want to carry it around one hand dangling because it might fall. And never put it down when you're done on its face or its side because it might tip over and fall. So if you put it down, you want to put it down carefully on maybe your bed or a table so that it's not going to fall. And also when you're carrying it around, you're going to want to do something called hold it in rest position. I'm holding the violin pretty much like a football. Like if I caught a football and I don't want somebody else to take it away from me, I'm holding it carefully here. And also you're going to want to make sure your elbow is behind the bridge right here. You don't want to put your elbow on the bridge and walk around squeezing it this way because this bridge might pop out. So rest position. Why do we do this? We do this so our hands are free and we can pick up a bow that we just dropped or grab a pencil or get our book out and put it on the music stand. You need to be able to do this. Uh, while you're getting ready to play. And remember, rest position is on the right side of your body, not the left. So your hands are free to get ready to play. So what else do you need to know when you're getting ready to play? Well, you need to know how to put your shoulder rest on. Now, if you have a real shoulder rest, what you're gonna do is make sure the feet, these are called the feet, are not facing out. There's a little bit of a curve right here. I don't know if you could see, that curve should be facing out on the shoulder rest on both sides. So there should be a little bit of an edge on the inside looking this way. That's gonna catch the edge of your violin so that you can put it on your violin. Don't forget to do this in your lap. So I'm taking both edges, pretend I'm using it on my lap and I'm going to slide these edges with the, my fingers like this pushing down so that's not too tight but a little bit tight and what you're going to want to see is this eye shape and oftentimes what I tell students is this eye shape tells you you put on your shoulder rest correctly. You're going to see an eyebrow like my eyebrow and an eye and if you see that and the shoulder rest is on securely, maybe you need your parents help to do this, then your shoulder rest is on correctly. And what you're going to also see is that the curve of your shoulder rest, let's see if I could do this, is going to lift up opposite the chin rest side and it's going to raise up this way a little bit higher. The, the curve here is a little bit closer to the instrument on the chin rest side and what that helps is providing support while you're holding an instrument. So if you put your shoulder rest on the wrong way, it's gonna look like a moon. And I tell this to kids all the time, it's gonna look like a moon. See that little brown moon at the bottom of my violin? That's not what you want. You want the eyebrow and eye shape. So in your lap, two hands, slide the feet around the edges, and it's pretty much going to go straight across this way. You want to see that. So if you did it like this, there's a little bit too much angle to it. it uh, what you want to see is the shoulder rest going straight across. Another thing that you're going to want to do when you're getting ready to play the violin is oftentimes 
violin bows are loose and you'll know that it's loose when the horsehair, remember this is horsehair from a horse's tail, is close to the stick and this has a screw at the end of the bow that you're going to tighten until there's about a pencil's width. As you can see as I'm tightening, the horsehair is coming away from the stick and that's a due to a design of a kind of a reverse bridge design of the bow that you're going to see the horsehair is a pencil's width away from the stick and that provides some tension so that while you're playing you're not playing the violin with the stick of the bow making a sound you're just playing with the horsehair if the bow is too loose you're going to hear extra noise from the bow scraping against the string you don't want that the other thing about tightening the bow is that if it looks like this which is about a thumb's width away from the horsehair you have tighten the bow too tight. So you're going to want to loosen it so you see a little bit of curve this way and right in the middle of the bow it's about a pencil's width. Don't make it too tight which would look something like this like a real bow and arrow you don't want the horse hair that far apart. The second thing is after your practice session you might want to you don't necessarily have to if you have a plastic bow but if you have a wood bow, you're going to want to loosen the string, uh, the strings on the bow, the hairs on the bow rather, and counterclockwise loosens those horse hairs. And you can see now the horse hair is all floppy. Clockwise tightens the, the bow and don't go too far. You want to go about a pencil's width right in the middle. You still want to see a curve this way. See that curve? If the bow is straight, you've made the bow too tight. This is a carbon fiber bow, so teachers don't worry. When you loosen the bow, you put the bow back into the case. You take your shoulder rest off when you're done practicing for the day. Make sure you take your shoulder rest off, because if you don't and you try to close the case, you're going to smash your instrument. Take the shoulder rest off, put it exactly the way you found it with the strings facing up into the case. Uh, maybe there's a compartment for your shoulder rest in the case, but if there's not, don't put it in there and close your case. Carefully buckle it shut. Another thing you might, I actually skipped a step. Another thing you might want to do before you put your violin away is polish it with a polishing cloth. This is a violin polishing cloth, but you can use a sock. You can use a t-shirt. Just make sure it's dry and clean. And the reason why you want to do this, if there's too much gunk on the string it's not gonna be as easy to play it's gonna make a kind of a muddy sound or a scratchier sound so you're gonna wipe off your violin also as you're playing because you rosin the bow um, it's gonna create some powder on the top and you're gonna want to wipe that away which reminds me if we're backtracking a little bit that the next day that you play and you take out your violin and you tighten up your bow to pencils with that you're going to want to rosin the bow. Remember, uh, you need rosin on the horsehair to make the horsehair stick to the string and make a sound. Now this is a super cheap dollar rosin and what I see kids do is oftentimes they try to rosin the bow this way, which is not the way you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to rosin in the channel holding it with your left hand with your right hand holding the bow at the frog and rubbing this way until you make a white powder they also leave the case on the on the rosin so you're going to want to take the case off and look at that rosin maybe you want to scratch it up the very first time you use it so it it gets it going you hear that sound that's the sound you want to hear when you rosin Oftentimes it's a good thing to put your thumb on top to press the horsehair. Remember you're rosining the horsehair and not the stick of the bow. Press the horsehair into the string so you hear that sound. Do this about 10 times and what that's going to do is create this white powder. Remember never touch the horsehair. It's going to create a white powder on your, uh, uh, on your horsehair that helps you pull sound from the string. 
So that about sums it up for this lesson. Remember, we're talking in this series. You need a few videos to get you started. My name is Kavis Aidy, and don't forget to like this video, type in a comment down below. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Subscribe to the channel. Also hit the notification bell. So if you're following with this series, you're going to know when a new video pops up. Really appreciate you watching. And if you're one of my Philadelphia school district students and you're still having trouble, type me a question in your Google Classroom or send me an email. Thanks so much. Peace.